Hey, thanks for joining me. Uh, we're digging into the box of comics that was sent to me by a viewer of the channel. And um, this one, when I first opened it up, I kind of flipped by it because I wasn't really paying attention to what it is because there was like 50 comics in there. So I just kind of flipping by. I'm like, Shaolin Cowboy, I've heard of that. Uh, whatever. And because it didn't have kind of your standard modern day flashy comic cover, I was just like, oh, whatever. I'll, I'll get back to that one. I'll look at it later. Um because in that box, there was a bunch of like independent stuff and really a whole bunch of really, there were some really poorly made books. I didn't pay attention to what this was. And that is a failure on my part. Holy shit. Um, I'm sure most of you out there watching are, you're all smarter than me and you're all well, well aware of more stuff than I've ever had the opportunity to see in my youth collecting comics and so I'm getting exposed to stuff for the first time. Again, I've heard of Shaolin Cowboy but I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know who did it. It wasn't until I flipped it open. Colors and Letters by this Peter Dougherty but then everything else by Jeff Darrow. I'm like, oh shit. And then I just take one look at this artwork. I'm like, oh my God, I'm in for a treat. Not my favorite cover. And I, I, I kind of appreciate it. it's kind of designed to look like old timey, like old Western kind of writing and the, the price point. Like it's got a specific look to it. I don't know why the white bar at the top is there. I don't particularly care for the color in that shot there and I don't particularly care for the coloring I, I don't like the colors on the cover at all it it's really kind of off-putting and would not draw my eye that's the unfortunate thing or at least I if I were to see it I'd be like Ugh, there's there's nothing interesting in there in the sea of comics that are on a wall if you're in a comic shop um I might glance at this and just keep going it should have Jeff Darrow's name shouted out on the front and I feel like the coloring could be better. That being said, everything everything else inside here is absolutely stunningly perfect. And as is the case with Jeff Darrow, holy shit. Just holy shit. If you know his work, you know you're in for something shockingly detailed and interesting, right? Um, I was late to the game uh, getting into Jeff Darrow's work. I didn't understand. I'd heard of him forever. I've seen some pinups before as I was growing up, but I never ended up picking up anything that he'd ever drawn. And it wasn't until the last couple of months I actually went online and bought uh, the uh, Hard Boiled that he did with Frank Miller. And this is like a recolored version, which I actually think the recolored version actually looks better than the original one. But I didn't like the story. I thought Hard Boiled was fucking stupid as far as a story. It just made no sense. It was just hyper violent, and that's fine. But it was Jeff Darrow's artwork that just blew me away. Who can draw that much detail? It's shocking. Couldn't believe what I was looking at. And so we get the same. Start with this just old west desert -y scene, and look at the textures on these rocks. This is so damn good. I like these heavy lines on the outside edge to show some separation between the different peaks, but then all this little detail of the rocks and stuff in the backgrounds there. It looks amazing. And this coloring, it's not like super glossy, like modern comic book glossy paper, but it's not exactly newsprint. I don't know what it is. And this coloring on here, don't know how it was done, but it looks great. It's different. So you got this old timey, I mean, it says Shaolin Cowboy. So Asian and Western, East meets West, right? That's the kind of the idea. It says someplace in the middle of nowhere, uh, the day before yesterday and a week before tomorrow. Okay. And then just look at these pages, just taking that artwork, the coloring on the, uh, the, the landscape here, but then the sky, it looks like a bright, hot day, maybe a gentle breeze. You can just hear this little lizard creature as it's making these weird little sounds. Um, as I was going through this book, as we, you'll see as we go into it, everything in this issue one, because it does say issue one, um, it feels like if this was like a movie, this is like the opening scene to a movie right before the opening credits. Like we're going to have an action scene. And then this whole book is just that. And uh, we'll see if you kind of agree with me by the end. But lizard creature walking around, jumping around. 
And like, it's, it's interesting that Jeff Darrow takes the time to, I, I was, I was about to say waste pages, but nothing he does is a waste when his art is this beautiful. So well done, but it's just a lizard that has nothing to do with anything. It's just there. And then we don't get into the story proper until, you know, the next page is in. So it's like three pages of stuff you didn't have to have. You could skip all of these and start here. But he wants to pace it, give it some pacing and some slow it down and quiet for a minute before we get into the extreme violence that's to come. Lizard creatures running around. There's some writing on a rock. I don't know if that's supposed to be significant to what. But then you see some voices off panel and they're like, are you sure he's coming this way? And he's like, I got a piss. Do I got time? He's like, shut up. He'll hear, he'll hear both of you. But then you hear another voice say too late. Anyways, we smelled you three miles off. Bushwhackers like you shouldn't ignore personal hygiene. And then these other, the first three voices were like, well, I, and then boom, a shot, another shot. And then, and another, uh, one, two, three. Yeah. Three guys shot dead. I mean, I don't know. Shot. There's no sound effects, which I just got done going on in another comic book about how I don't need sound effects. Um, this might be a place where it might be helpful because that sound, when it's off panel, that would help sell the story. Were they stabbed? Were they? Well, I just know they're shot because I know what's coming up. The guy's got a gun. So they're shot. Pow, pow, pow. No sound effect to sell it, which is weird because, like I said, I just went on a big old rant in the previous book I was looking at in Fathom how I was just like, I don't need sound effects. I, I don't need that shit. It bugs me. I don't like it. But here I could see a need for it. Anyway, shoots these guys. And they're down here just twitching like I, I like they're just cackling and gagging. And then we get a guy riding a – I was going to say a horse, but I think that's supposed to be like a donkey or a mule, like with the hair, I'm guessing. But it's the this mule that's talking. This thing is talking for whatever reason. And um, you got the this guy up on top, got the gun in his hand, all kinds of guns and weapons and gear around him. So it's kind of cowboy-ish, but also – um, you can't quite tell yet, but it's like an old Asian guy. Why is the horse wearing like a sun visor like you wear it like a poker game or something like that? I don't know why I've seen that. Um, it's weird. This whole thing is weird. So it feels like it's some kind of post-apocalyptic Mad Max type future. But the donkey talks. And I like how there's like a bunch of flies poofed around its tail there. So the silent warrior guy takes a six shooter and empties the empty shells and they fall into the guy's mouth for some reason. I don't, I don't know what the point of that was, but I don't know if it requires an explanation. It's just like a, a cultural thing that happens in this world. I don't know. It doesn't tell you. So you just got to kind of think about it. Anyway, they go wandering off and the, 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 the donkey or mule or whatever the fuck it is, it just kind of keeps talking. This thing's talking, but not the silent hero guy. Meanwhile, um, they're passing through this, you know, this, this pass in the rocks. A bunch of birds are caw, caw, caw. There's some sound effects, but it's actually the sound the birds are making. So that makes sense. It's like there's something rustling in the distance and he notices it, like something disturbed the birds. There's a close-up shot of our silent warrior's face. He looks, he sees something. What does he see? Well, let's get into a double page spread. He's suddenly surrounded by this sea of people. Now, there's something interesting going on here that's wild. But the dialogue is just like, um, basically like, um, well, the donkey, he's saying, well, swell, we let the Frenchman sneak up on our ninja backsides. In hindsight, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, but this guy, who I guess is supposed to be the leader of the group, um, he goes on and has a bunch of dialogue about how he's in charge and this, that, the other. And we assume you took out our three lookouts. And he's like, I must admit, I never enjoyed their company. But Juan, one of the guys that was killed in the previous pages by our hero here, he says, Juan never failed to amuse me with his insightful little asides to any situation or discussion. He must have left you with a memorable quote. Pray share it with us before our little dance begins. So he's like, yeah, yeah, tell us something that our, 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 our compatriot that you killed. Tell us something about him before we murder you to death. So this is where something artistically shocking. I have never seen anything like this in a comic book ever. Like never seen anybody pull this off. And who could do it but Jeff Darrow? But first off, look at this. Double page spread. All these people in the background. 
they're all different body types, shapes, sizes, clothing, gear, everything. Just anything and everything you can think of, you can see here, right? Well, this is the start of an image, right? This is where he's at and all these people just kind of come out of the rocks and surrounded him. It continues to another double page spread. And if you could see where this page ends is directly lined up with the next page here. It lines up. If you had all this artwork lined up side by side, this would be one big long panoramic shot. So they all line up. Here's another shot of a whole bunch of uh, double page spread of more characters. Great designs. Every outfit is different. There's like a topless like pirate girl, like a Mexican hombre. Um, just, I, what, the, I could never come up with all these in a million years. Like this is where Jeff Darrow is just a god amongst men. Whole double page spread. Guess what? It keeps going. Like you see the front of a car here? Continues right here. The, the figures are getting a little closer to us too. Um, I don't know if that was very obvious. A little bit. They're a little bit farther off here. Next double page spread, a little bit closer. Next one, a lot closer. Animals, birds, cat with a mouse in its, in its mouth. They're all just sitting around, all these people. He's surrounded by just, what is it, 100 different people? Next double page spread, even more, keeps going. I just, I look at the horse. This guy's got a bunch of like flies hanging around his head. He's kind of gross and disgusting. Close up on all the details. Man, Jeff Darrow does realistic gun details like nobody else. And he draws by hand, like... As far as I understand it, especially this is from 2004. This isn't any kind of digital thing. This is all drawn by hand. It just keeps going even more. Way up close on these guys here. It gets some details on watches on their hand, tattoos, weird little figurines all over them. Holy crap. So it's one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pages. And they're all like you could have these like lined up on a wall, and it's just one big long shot going through all these pages of these characters. I have never seen anything like this in a comic. Now, it's one scene, it's basically one panel taking up how many pages in your book? Ten, like ten pages in your book. So you lose a lot of real estate to tell a story. So that's why I was saying earlier, this entire opening scene in this this book, this comic, this entire book feels like an opening scene before it, before the credits of a movie. Like you can just see it starting out in the desert, the wind's blowing, fights these guys, and gets cornered and is surrounded by all these slimeball people of the desert. And then as we get to this scene coming up here, our heroic guy puts his hands in the air. And the guy continues, come now, be a sport and share with us. And then somehow this stick, this device, this tool that our hero has, it like leaps to his hand, like he uses the force or something. I don't know how it gets to his hand. I don't know that it matters. But then you see the, the, the mule like does a kick in the air, sends him up. And then he's flying through the air, flip, twist, and pulls a sword out of this cane weapon. So here's where the Shaolin part of the cowboy comes in. Lands right in front of all the people. And like, oh, how charmingly Asian of you. And without the aid of wires. <laughs> yeah. Um, look at the detail on this stuff. And again, the coloring is so good. It's so different. I wish you could see the texture of this paper. It's, it's unlike anything I've seen in any of the comics I used to collect. But it looks great. So he points the gun at the guy. He says, if you are quite through, it is my turn for a bit of bravado. Of course, mine is of a higher caliber. Huh? Get it? Caliber. By, of course, he means the strength of his character and the, the size of his weapon. It's a homonym. Anyway, our heroic guy, he, it looks like he does one slice with the sword. But I'm guessing it's two. It might have been slice, slice, but it looks like one. Now, why did I say it's two? 
Well, we'll get to it here in just a second. Slices and then puts his sword back in its sheath, like you see in like ninja movies and anime. Slice sword back into its case to show you how fast and precisely deadly he is. Now suddenly the guy that's like verbal and yapping, he's just quiet. He's just quiet suddenly. And then our, our guy, he kicks with his leg right at his throat and a little like cut out section of his throat goes flying. That's why I was like, he had to have chopped him twice to do that. But a little slice of his throat goes flying out into the distance. And there's his foot right up front, right up close. Man, this would be an incredible movie. Tarantino should make this shit. Kicks the slice of his throat out. And then his head just flies off and gushes blood everywhere. A dog catches the piece of meat from his throat in the background. That's hilarious. And now the violence is on. Shaolin Cowboy here is just chopping people to death. Just slice, stab, murder, blood, guts. Grabs a gun that's falling in the air and starts unloading it into other people. Just killing them. Again, silent, almost no dialogue. And certainly no text boxes telling you shit you don't need to know. It's just, we're here just to observe the visuals. And holy shit, is it so good. Like, look at the detail in this. Like, he's drawn the belt and every leathery bullet hole, like the loop to store your rounds on your belt. And each one's a little different. And the leathery look of that holster, the drawing the blood like that. Holy shit, is that good. So violence is happening. I love this shot. Two dogs are on the ground fighting over that piece of meat sliced from that guy's neck. That's hilarious. I laughed out loud at that. So good. Splash page of the violence. Like our one little silent warrior is just shooting the shit out of him, chopping him up, just murdering the hell out of everything. This little monkey that was like the pet of the guy who got his head cut off. He's standing here. And then the, the mule in the background, he says that monkey has NRA written all over him. That's kind of funny. So he comes up behind him and then the monkey can speak. He gets a gun and the monkey's like safety off, shell in the chamber, aim, hold breath, squeeze, don't pull the trigger. Like he's going to try and shoot our heroic ninja guy. Mule stomps on his ass and sends him running. And of course the mule says, how Republican of me. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Like, whatever. Anyway, mule contributes, stops the monkey from shooting. And then just the violence just keeps going on. Our guy is like, love this shot. He's like slicing this guy straight up from the nuts, right up to the midpoint in his body here, just slicing him in half. And in the next panel, just continues the cut and slices the guy in half into two pieces. So insane. Chopping guy's arm off. Blood is flying everywhere. He stabs this guy into the heart and his the guy's heart explodes out the back of his chest. Like, it's so ridiculous. This is like a Tarantino movie, right? This is like Kill Bill, except way more ridiculous. That is so great. Stab, heart out the back. And then you see in the background this, like, crab creature walking up, just coming up through the desert. Like, okay, why, why is that there? You get to the page where everything's kind of calmed down. Like, our, our Shaolin warrior guy, he's, like, in this, like, walking, like, stance like he's not bothered. He's calm. He's he's easily taking all these people out. Everything calms out for a minute. And then the, the bad guys here, they're like, time out. We call a time's out. We need a time out. The other guy's like, Tr truce. We call a truce. No fair killing after a truce is called. So the mule's like, oh, I see. It's playground rules. All right. How adult. And then, um, but what we see right here is that crab that was walking up. He's got like Nazi symbols on him. Like what? Nazi crab. The fuck does that mean? They're like, time out. Shaolin cowboy turns, looks. And then the crab, Nazi crab, says, it's time to end this. Like, what? And that's the end of the book. Fuck. God damn it. God damn, I want to know what happens next. I have no idea what's going on. This is some wild, crazy shit. And holy crap, is it one of the most entertaining things I've ever seen in a long time. Just from an artistic perspective, Jeff Darrow is unbelievable holy crap is he good and it's funny to have a, a this crab show up and it's like it's time to end this like to end the battle but it's also the end of the book clever um i gotta find more of these 
Like I said, I'd heard of it, never seen it. Don't care for the cover too much. Like I don't even want to use this cover as like the thumbnail to the, the video I'm going to put up. Like maybe one of these pages of the double page spread. I don't know what I'm going to use. Don't care for the cover. It doesn't tell you how awesome the insides are. But that's just me, just my kind of personal opinion on it. So I need more of these. Holy shit, is this fun. Um, so I'm. have you guys seen this before? What did you think of when you saw it? It's just so wild. I can. I, I was just blown away. Again, I saw the cover, kind of dismissed it, looked at it later. I'm like, wow, wow, wow. Okay, I get it. Um, Jeff Darrow is just unbelievable. So uh, that's all I got for now. And uh, hopefully I can find more of these. I want to find out how many more issues this went, see if I can collect them up because I need to know. I just need to see this art. So that's all I've got for now. As always, uh, thank you for watching and everybody go make your comics.